What's up guys, welcome back to this video and today we are going to talk about how I created this apocalyptic slash abandoned school classrooms artwork using Blender and Adobe Photoshop. So let's go. So I had this idea in my mind from some time now and it was finally time to get this artwork on canvas. I usually start with reference researching and for artworks like this, like concept art or environment design references, I most of the times use ArtStation. But you can use any website or any other resource for your reference as you prefer. The next step is getting those assets. Now if you are someone who prefer modeling and texturing on their own, it's great. And if you are someone who prefer getting assets from internet, maybe like from Sketchfab, Bridge or CG Trader for example, it's great as well. For me personally, I mix both of these approaches because I am not perfect with modeling yet and right now I am focusing more upon the lighting and composition type. Anyways, so before working you can make a list of all the assets that you want. Some people call it asset sheet or you can call it checklist whatever you want. This will help you to focus only on important stuff and you can save your money if you are buying assets or maybe you can save your precious time if you are modeling. Also then you can make a rough sketch in Photoshop or maybe in Blender itself you can make a rough block out with simple cubes or other simple shapes. It can give you a blueprint of what you really want to achieve. Let's go. Now I started working on making that classroom. So obviously I started with default cube and then I started scaling it in X and Y dimension. The aim was to keep it a little bigger because we expect a lot of space in a classroom so that everything and everyone can fit in. Now please remember I am doing it quickly for the video purpose when I was working on that personal artwork I of course spent a lot of time in it. Then I started adding windows on one side of this cube. To create windows I simply added two loop cuts in the middle of the face, one loop cut on top, one on bottom and then one one loop cut on the left and right corner. Then I simply deleted these two big faces. That's it. Of course these do not look like windows. But I am not going to make highly polished windows because they are not going to be visible in final scene. I am just making enough space so that light can come from that space. Otherwise only our one outer face is going to be lit up by our HDRI lights. I hope you understand what I mean. So if we do not delete these two faces, light won't reach inside and we won't be able to see anything. That's why I added those rough windows and I do not recommend you to work on stuff which is obviously not going to be visible to anyone. Of course if you want to do it for your personal sake, you can feel free to create those windows. If you are not aware with the edge cuts and the loop cuts, I'll link some resources so that you can learn about them in the description. So guys, the next part is materials. But before that I make sure I press Ctrl and A and then apply scale. Otherwise my textures are going to look really stretchy. So the materials are divided into two parts. One is floor material which is the wooden floor material and the second is wall plaster texture. Let's talk about the floor texture first because it's pretty easy. So for the floor texture the first thing was simple. I added a new material, I selected principal BDSF shader and using the shortcut Ctrl Shift and T I applied all textures at once. Once the texture was here I selected the floor in edit mode and then I clicked on assign on the right side there you can see. Then you can go to edit mode select the whole floor and then using the shortcut U I clicked on smart UV project to unwrap it. Then you can go to UV editing tab and then you can adjust the size that is scaling up or down as per your need. But that's not enough for floor. We are going to add a concrete texture with it because we don't want a highly clean floor because we are working on an apocalyptic artwork. So I simply added a concrete texture and then using the mix shader I mixed these two images. The next part is adding plaster wall texture and I did the same way that is adding a material and then simply selecting and then just assigning the texture to it but here in the final artwork you can see that there's a brick texture as well well i recommend you to simply do it in photoshop it's just pretty easy you can just add an image and paint it over it however 
you can do it in blender as well using the mix texture i mean the mix shader so yes i'll leave the link in description and you can watch the tutorial on how i learned as well uh, to add these two textures so yes this is how i edit textures and now let's move to add assets and then focus upon the composition so next part is adding assets i'm going to add some desks benches almira some green board and some books etc in our scene by the way the green board is going to be our main focus point in this artwork now like you can see that i'm working on an apocalyptic work i'm going to add assets in such a way that it looks like it's abandoned scene for example if i was working on a normal classroom scene i would adjust everything in normal way like equal distance between desks or maybe having all tables pointing towards the green board but here as our idea is apocalyptic, we are going to add everything in an unarranged manner. Once I added everything in front, for detailing I added some papers lying on floor with rough drawings and sketches on them. For the texture, well I simply downloaded some old paper textures, imported them in Photoshop, drew on them and then used them as a material, I mean image texture on a plane in Blender, it's pretty easy to be honest. Alright guys, so now moving on, the next part is lighting. So there's no right or wrong way to light things, but I'll try to explain my decisions while lighting this artwork. So as you can tell that the style I oftentimes chase is realism, and I think HDRI lighting is a great and quick way to move towards it. Also HDRI lightings are good for having realistic exterior lighting. The reason why we created windows in first place was to have light coming from outside. So I'm going to simply add an overcast sort of HDRI because overcast lightings are nice way to tell abandoned stories as they have nice blue highlights. Also this is an apocalyptic artwork so I'm not going to add those secondary lights like bulb, tube lights or LED lights because it won't make sense for this piece. You can get HDRIs from any resource. I am personally using Polyheaven, link in description because it's a free source but you can use your any preferred website. Then in world settings of shader tab, I'm simply going to rotate the Z axis so I can have desired light and shadow direction. This is a fun part, just experiment with what you like. Pretty easy and like I said, we don't have to add other lights manually for this one. You can also play with strength of HDRI as well. So now, after having all assets placed successfully and having the lighting as we want, it's time to finish things in Blender so we can move towards post-processing. Like first, I readjusted any desks or benches if I wanted to, rotated doors of Almira etc. Also you can see I added these two cubes sort of thing to add bit more of detail in room. And one thing I did wrong when I created this artwork for the first time was I did not bevel the edges of these cubes. It is important to do so because otherwise you can see how sharp and perfect the edges look and it's not something that we really want to. So take care of it and make sure you bevel your edges. I also learned it recently. So for rendering, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to use my GPU for rendering. Around 250 to 300 samples are more than enough for this artwork. And by the way, for denoiser, I'm going to use optics denoiser. I press F12 and then I'm going to wait for render to complete. Usually the images really don't take much time to render anyways. I then save the image in PNG format and now I'm going to the final but important part of this artwork that is post processing this image in Photoshop. So let's drag and drop this in Photoshop and start post processing it. So moving on to final step but first let's look at our final render. Well the thing is 3D renders look incomplete without post processing. They lack imperfections, randomness and other minor details like grunge and noise. Yes we can do it in Blender itself too and if I was making an animation, I would probably do as much as I can in Blender. But here for images, I feel it's a bit easy to do it in Photoshop. Now let's come back to our image. So here you can see that how we have very plain textures of wood on the tables or you can see the Almira's door is a bit clean too. We also have some other things to fix. We also have to add some color grading to it to make it more bluish and give that spooky sort of vibe. So I started with some rough wood textures on the tables, put them on overlay blend mode and mask out and play with its opacity. I did same with Almira as well. 
I also added some peeling stickers here and there and I also decided to add a nice text of study time on green board to make it a bit more intense. Some people asked me on my Instagram what font it was, actually I just simply painted it with white color using my graphic tablet. Also you can tell that this is just experimental sort of thing, there is no fixed rule in it so I just continue to add or remove things that I want. Then I decided to add some text and paint some scratches on tables because I have nice memory with this thing from my school time. So more details I add as we move like some cracks on the cubes that we added in corner to make it a bit more destroyed. In final run, I move to camera filter and simply start playing with sliders. But mainly I added some blue tint, played up with contrast, clarity and a bit of vignette. Then after camera raw filter, I simply added some noise to give it a bit more imperfect look and here's our final artwork. So yes, here's our final artwork and I hope you like the artwork and the process as well. I hope you learned a thing or two from this video and if you did, please consider leaving a like and a comment and if you want to see more of these videos, consider subscribing the channel. Also you're going to find all of my other links like Instagram, Twitter or ArtStation in description. You can follow me there, check out my work over there or you can DM me there as well if you have any questions from me. So yeah, for now, I'm going to see you in the next video. Till then, enjoy.